and welcome to Talk Art. I'm Sally Rain, and I will be your host as we delve into the world of the artist and the art that's all around us. Talk Art is sponsored by the Silicon Valley Open Studios. During the first three weekends in May, hundreds of local artists open their studios to the public. For more information, you can go to the website svos.org. Our guest, Rebecca Holland, is an oil painter who creates stunningly beautiful and detailed landscapes and seascapes that create a magical quality of light on her canvases. Welcome, Rebecca. Thank you, Sally. I'm so glad you could come to talk art. I've been a fan of your art for many, many years now. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. You're welcome. <laughs> so how did you get started in creating such beautiful, fine details? In your art? Well, really, I, I really was just born this way. I remember when I was two and a half, three years old, wow. I, I clearly remember trying to draw horses. And of course, the grown ups had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> and my aunt, who knew nothing, had given me charcoal, and I, I didn't eat it. I tried to draw horses. And I've been drawing uh, uh, with charcoal and pens and pencils ever since and eventually I got a camera. Oh nice, yeah. so you went from charcoal pencils to photography. Right, right. But I'm glad I spent all those years with the hand-eye coordination of, of drawing what I saw and I still enjoy going out into the world and doing watercolors and sketches. Did you have any specific training for learning how to paint with oils and uh, not really. Uh, my mother bought me a set of oil paints when I was nine years old and I took a few art classes and I saw some beautiful paintings hung in the art school and I was very inspired by them. Wow. And I started looking at the work of the masters. Rembrandt uh, inspired me even when I was a tiny child and I just would stare and stare at books with his images and oh, yeah, that's interesting so. because your quality of light is so like interesting and magical they look very detailed and realistic but somehow the colors aren't as I mean they seem more vibrant can you tell us a little <laughs> bit about how so, you get those colors well people sometimes say what kind of paint do you buy and I say it's a regular kind of paint but I I would look at it at the school of art uh, called chiaroscuro, mm -hmm. which means light coming from darkness. And I was just fascinated by it. And I would just look at it until I just hurt. And wow. I was wanting to try to do that. And so uh, that's Did that's you spend any time copying other artists? Or did no. you just apply techniques to your own work? Yeah, no, I didn't try copying. That is a, a, an old fashioned way of learning. Right but I didn't because it seemed too boring. I, <laughs> I just wanted to look and see, oh, I see how they do it. Interesting, and so you I are self-taught. Yes. Wow, yes. that's amazing because your style is so perfect. It's amazing. Well, it's, I say I'm self-taught, but actually I've been learning all along right. from other artists, uh, reading books, going to museums, uh, soaking it up, asking questions. So I'm still learning. Aren't we all? Yeah. So what inspires you? Where, where do you get your paintings from? Well, I've, I spend as much time as I can out in nature itself. Mm -hmm. And I soak it up. And that's where it comes from. It comes through me, not because of me or by me, but because I've soaked it up. And I can't stand it. You know, I want to get it out, and I want to share it with, with other people. I've always felt that way. Wow, well you brought some images of some of your paintings. Why don't we take a look at some of those now and we can see where you've been and what has influenced you. This is the view from the ranch where I live. Wow, so you live there and does the fog come in like that? that it does and I saw a rainbow run one morning and I didn't get my camera in time so I had to just paint that from memory. But Every day is magical. I, I spent so much time looking out over the ocean, 
from Skyline and the way the fog rolls in and reveals the islands in the fog. Uh, it's just, it's fascinating. It's just ever changing. How do you get the cloud technique, that beautiful details oh, in your I've, clouds? I learned that. Um, at an, I used to, to travel around and sell my paintings on street corners with the other artists. And uh, somebody there said, try this. Look, you put the paint on just rough, throw it on any way you want. And then you take a dry, a big fat dry brush and just gently smooth it and, and, and brush it. They, people think it's airbrush, but it's not. It's a, it's a big fat dry brush. <laughs> oh, this is where my art comes from. Me and my friends get on our horses and ride out into the woods and have a wonderful day. And what can I do but so want to share it? This is the actual light from a this photograph. Is the, this is me and my horse gang at Berry Falls in Big Basin. And uh, this is where my paintings come from. This is Berry Falls. This is the painting that came from that ride. I work from light to dark and from back to front. And I have a warm light in the back and, and a, usually a cooler, darker uh, colors in the front so that the light seems to glow from the back. Well, it definitely glows. This is a self-portrait. This is me and my horse, Cloud, looking out over, over Lobitos Creek Ranch, ranch where, uh, where I do my painting. You look so small in such a beautiful, wide mm -hmm. I know. expanse of grass. It's always beautiful. good to go out into nature and have that feeling about how small we are and uh, it, it gives you a perspective. This is one of the paintings that um, I painted from um, an open space, peninsula, mid-peninsula regional open space has always been a place where I go to paint. And that's just south of San Francisco in the mountains. That's right. This is near 92 and Skyline, this particular piece. And this, this is Tunitas Creek, right near where I live. This, this piece was commissioned by the Kings Mountain Art Fair to commemorate uh, their 45th anniversary. So you'll find it on posters. And this was a commission painting, uh, a very special place I like to go in. Uh, in open space at Soda Gulch. And it was commissioned by a friend of mine, and he and I went uh, hiking, and we photographed many things that he loved, and I put them together for him. So this isn't an actual space it's not, from a photograph. You put it together? Right, kind of right. Composite? It's a composite. Often I do that. So I'll photograph a fern, and I'll photograph a piece of bark, and I'll photograph a little pool and then I'll put it together. It looks like it could have been exactly like that. That's Everybody amazing. says, oh, I know I've been to that place. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really magical instead. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's a person's memory that you want to, uh, to yeah. wake up. <laughs> so you said that one was a commission piece. Right. Tell us a little bit about your commission process. How does that work for you? It's so much fun because I just love making people happy anyway. Right. And so when I get to paint something just for them, I have a special opportunity to get inside of their feelings and what's important to them. And they share some things with me. And by the time we work on the painting together, we're very, very intimately connected on the way it feels to them. And I've had people cry when they see their finished work oh, and wow. say, how did you know? That's just what was inside of me. So you, you're trying to create an emotional response with them? Is that your main goal, do you think? I want to make them happy, but you see, they know what makes them happy. Right. And when they s spill it all out to me, I remember what they say. And, and I put it together. And oftentimes, though, we have to go there. 
You have I, some pictures showing you at a place uh, yes. that you did a commission. Let's take a look at those, right. and you can talk a little bit about how you got there and right. what you were doing. People bring me photographs and say, can you paint this? I go, no, but can we go there? There you go. <laughs> yeah. Now this, we couldn't go there because this was really his dream of the dark side on the left and the light side on the right. and looking out into the distance was his dream of bringing it all together and he had a story about this would be where he would take a lady friend and and sit there i he said <laughs> make a place where i could sit with her and fall in love this was a really special commission that i did uh, for a collector of mine his mother was moving to an assisted living facility and she had lived in the family home with a view of Windy Hill ever since my friend was just a little boy. But it had changed so much. Uh, big houses were built in front of it, and they, they planted tall trees, and you could no longer see Windy Hill from their house. Oh. Mm. And so he showed me old family video, and I got up on the roof, and I, I recreated the scene as it was when wow. he was a little boy. So now his mother uh, has that painting um, to remind her. This, this was a commission, oh, light and water. Wonderful people. I got to know them very, very well because it represented um, music that she was composing uh, called Light and Water. And the two horses represent their relationship. So I videoed two horses playing and then took frame grabs and they picked which horse they were and I put them together. Very nice. That's <laughs> beautiful painting. It was so much fun. It <laughs> oh, and where's yeah. this? That's Echo Lake and that's when the man, my friend Fred, <laughs> Brought, brought these photos and said, can you paint this? I said, no, I have to go there. So we spent the weekend and I hiked in the mountains. And You were there, but you created a Photoshop composite. Oh, yes. So this. I took Let's take many, a look many, at that now. many, many photographs and I put it together in Photoshop and this is the composite so that I could show him what the composition what it would was. Look like. And they, he showed it to his daughter and she made one change. She said, but dad there's this little island on the left and it's not there so <laughs> and because she said I've always sat on our deck and looked at that island I said oh I don't want to leave that out no so I put I shifted it a little bit I found the photograph of the island in it and the whole family uh, loves this because it reminds them of all the good times they had together up at the lake yeah so you said you had a video. Tell us a little bit about that and then we'll take a look. Well, while I was painting that commission piece, um, Michael Watson, who was an intern at our film studio at Lobitos Creek Ranch, uh, created this as a part of his work and um, very, very talented. Uh, he's from New Zealand. Well, let's mm -hmm. take a look at that. Thank you. Love to see it.
This also is a commission piece that I did for a wonderful woman, and this was a romantic spot for her. And there again, I said, oh, take me to this romantic spot where she and her sweetheart had their first picnic. And uh, this was some time ago, and they are living happily ever after with their original painting. This is a gicle uh, print on canvas, and it's been very, very popular. And it's a way that I can continue to share my work with people. So um, if, you, if you see it close up, you would know and you would see that every detail of the city is absolutely perfect. Uh, the water tower on Alcatraz, everything. Um, it was so fun to do. And it's a composite also of all of these different photographs. And then I blew up the composite to the size of the canvas and then traced it like that. And that's, that's how I get accuracy in my work. It's beautiful. And um, so now you're going to demonstrate a little bit of your painting techniques here in the studio. This canvas is a view uh, from up above uh, the arena. Uh, where, where my horses are, and one, one day I looked out, and all of a sudden the light just came on. It just flashed on. I went, wow. So I get out my iPhone, and I take pictures, pictures of it, and um, come back to the studio and paint from, from, uh, from my... Of course, you see it's enhanced. So I guess that's the magic of it, because you can... You can intensify the colors. And here again, you have the light shining through. So what I've done here is I've let this dry because you need to paint uh, sometimes wet on wet. Sometimes you paint, um, sometimes you, paint, you let it dry and so that you can get the detail. But also so that your paint will flow out uh, there are techniques for that. You can re-oil, re-oil the area like this with a little bit of medium and thinner mixed together. And where did I learn to do these things? Uh, Gamblin has a wonderful support system and I can call them up and say, you know, I was thinking and they will, they'll say, well try Try this or try this, and so they'll Gamblin send is the company that makes the, the medium. The company that makes this. So I'm always learning. For instance, I have my little cheat sheet here, where they say which mediums have more fat and which are thin, and you want to always work uh, from uh, thin to fat, so that the you have adhesion between the layers. So uh, they've been very, very helpful. And uh, also, oh, this is important. Safety first. I already have this on my hands. It's uh, to protect my hands so I don't have to wear gloves. It's wax. And then the oil paint just rinses right off. Oh, good. Yeah. So you don't have to worry too much about the toxic colors. I do my best. And then I have a can with a tight-fitting lid. And I always try to, to be as, as conscious as I can when I work. So I look at this and, OK, this is a lighter color of green. I know what kind of trees they are. This is a tan oak. These are, this is a tan oak. These are redwoods. Um, this is a fir. I spend a lot of time with these trees, so when I'm painting them, I actually know what kind of tree it is that I'm painting. I've seen it close up and personal, collected the leaves and brought the leaves and bark and pieces home. I have pieces of things all over my studio. How long have you been living there? Uh, I've been 
on Kings Mountain since I was 19 years old, living in the Redwoods. And then I moved down to Lobitos Creek um, about 18 years ago. And it has definitely changed my work. I, I used to live in the Redwoods, and I painted the Redwoods. And now I'm further down, down the hill. And it has changed. So what kind of brushes do you use to get those beautiful details? Well, I have, I have a saying, and it sounds like a joke, but it's true. If you're not getting what you want, try a different brush. <laughs> So, one of the brushes uh, that I bought, this is made out of um, the hairs of the tail of, uh, uh, of a sable from, from Russia in the wintertime. <laughs> Very specific. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. And, Look, look at this, what it does. It's a very expensive brush, but you can't paint, you can't paint, uh, you can't get these lines any other way, except to have a perfectly beautiful brush. Yes, I agree. See? Brushes are important, and taking care of them is important too. Oh yes, I've had some of these brushes for 40 years. This one is fairly new. I bought it to, to paint the wires on the Golden Gate Bridge, the cables. Okay, well let's take a look at some of your other paintings that are down closer to the ocean. You've, we've seen the redwoods. Let's take a look at the scenes from farther down. This is the pond. Oh, look at that sky. That is just beautiful. Where is this one? Well, this is right along the beach. It's an irrigation pond. And it, it makes me think of um, Monet's garden, because every time I drive by that pond, it's a different color. I could paint, I've painted that pond maybe 10 times. Wow. I have one collector who's bought several. <laughs> Same pond, different color. The barns. Oh. The lifestyle, the country lifestyle. Oh, look being at that beautiful beach. reflection. That is gorgeous. Did you get that in photographs? I did. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. A chance of rain. I love that idea that the sky suggests that the farmer is waiting. And we're still waiting. You're definitely getting down closer to the ocean. There it right. is. Anya Nuevo. So I just took that with my iPhone. That's beautiful. And came home and painted it. Oh, this one's one of my favorite. This is a classic view of Half Moon Bay. Wow. How do you get the waves so beautiful and perfect? They're gorgeous. <laughs> I, st I study their structure. I, I just stare at them until I soak it up enough. Well, what do you think people get out of art? What is the purpose of art in people's lives? Mm. Well, you know, people come to me and they tell me stories about what their life, how their, their life has gone and what these paintings mean to them. And I began to understand a lot from what they've told me. And I understand that a lot of people are not immersed in nature on a every single day like I am. Right. And n not by choice, but by circumstances. They're in the city, mm -hmm. and they don't, they're not in touch with the things that nurture me. When I go out in a redwood forest and I stand next to a redwood tree, I get the message. I get the perspective right. of what's really important. What I thought was important, not so important. Right. And I get that feeling, and I want to take it back and share it with people. And they need that in their life, and they tell me how important it's been to them. Sometimes 
they make me cry. <laughs> so it's, it's like an emotional healing of sorts. That's what they've told me. And in fact, I've been invited uh, recently to speak uh, on a panel at an event on the subject of the healing power of art. Wow. And I realize uh, all along it's been nurturing and healing me in right. my life. Very interesting. And, and sharing that makes me happy and So very grateful. briefly, where can people see your art in the near future? Oh, well, Kings Mountain Art Fair and on my website. And I'm starting to do shows again. I, for a long, long time, I didn't. And uh, so I'm going to be doing a number of shows, and I think you'll be able to find me. Excellent. So looking on your website at these beautiful images. Well, right. thank you so much for being on Talk Art, Rebecca. Your mm -hmm. paintings are lovely. Thank you so much, Sally, for having me. You're welcome. I'm very, very grateful to be an artist and to be here. Wow. Excellent.